very good job. I can hear you, Skyler. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Jesus had already died, 
He had already resurrected. He had already spent time with the disciples. He ate with them some fish. He was getting ready to depart. He was getting ready to return to his father. In Acts chapter 1, verse 6. Notice what's in the disciples' mind. Acts 1, verse 6. Therefore, when they had come together, they asked him, this is Jesus, saying, Lord, will you at this time restore the kingdom to Israel? What's in the mind of the disciples? Are you now going to get the Romans? We've been waiting for this Messiah. You came, yes, you died, but thank God you resurrected. But now, are you going to restore your kingdom here? To Israel. Now, are, you, are they going to get it? The disciples have spent three and a half years with Jesus. How long? Three and a half years with Jesus. And Jesus had told them, and they had heard it. Where Jesus had said, my kingdom is not of this world. Even when, when Peter tried to defend Jesus there in the Garden of Gethsemane, he took the sword. What did Jesus say? No, no, put your sword away. I can call my angels to come down if I want to. But my kingdom is not of this world. And yet here, after all of this, the disciples are still not getting it. And their question is, you know, now are we going to get our kingdom here? Now are you going to, to restore? After three and a half years of living with Jesus, sleeping with Jesus, eating with Jesus, their minds were set on earthly things. And my first point that I want to share with you, church, is that time in the church means nothing. Time in the church means nothing. It's not how long you've been in the church, or how long you've been a Christian, but have you been filled with the Spirit of God? Have you been filled with His Holy Spirit? You can sit in church, Sabbath after Sabbath, sing and return tithes, but if the Holy Spirit isn't penetrating your heart, and changing you, and filling you, when Christ comes, he will say those sad words. I don't know you. I don't know you. But praise God, God is still waiting. God is still waiting. The disciples have heard many sermons from Jesus. The, the Sermon on the Mount, they were there. And we can hear sermons after sermons, but sermons don't change people. I've, I've come to realize that. The Spirit of God changes people. Amen. Sermons don't really change people. Because I have, I have heard people say, Amen, and Amen, and that was a great sermon, and good sermon, but yet they are not changed and are still their selfish evil ways. The Spirit of God changes Week after week, month after month, year after year, we may sit <clears throat> and say that was a wonderful church service. Didn't those kids seem great? Amen. Wasn't that special music wonderful? Amen. Wasn't that sermon wonderful? Amen. Wasn't that ministry, that academy, so many things. Week after week, month after month, Sabbath after Sabbath, year after year. Amen. Amen. And yet, <coughs> Excuse me. And yet, in the parking lot, or in the fellowship lunch, we get upset with a brother or sister for the dumbest thing. And I can picture God saying, weren't they saying amen in the sanctuary? Weren't they saying praise the Lord? Didn't, didn't they say, Lord, we want to see Jesus? Open my eyes, Lord, I want. Weren't they saying that? Time in the church means nothing if the Holy Spirit is not in you. The Holy Spirit is not in you. Years in the church don't, do not mean much. In Luke 22, verse 32, Jesus, at the end of his ministry, he tells Peter, 
Luke 22, 32, I have prayed for you, Peter, that your faith may not fail, and that when you are converted, you may strengthen your brethren. That's interesting. After three and a half years with Jesus, Peter is still not converted. That gives hope for me. And you. After three and a half years with Jesus, Jesus says, Peter, I pray for you. The devil wants you, and I pray for you. And I pray that when you are converted, or when you return to me, the New King James says, you will strengthen your brother. Peter had not gotten it yet. But God is still waiting. The disciples spent all this time with Jesus, and they were barely changed. Have you really thought that through, friends? Have you really thought that through? Now, I am directing to the seniors, to those who have more years in the church. Friends, petty talk and petty things should not bother you. You shouldn't be getting upset of stuff that happens in the church. As a Christian, with many years in the church, you ought to be able to handle someone that doesn't shake your hand, someone that doesn't say happy service, someone that sits in your spot, someone that took your parking space, or took my parking space. As a person who has been longer years in the church, you should be able to handle more things than the babies in Christ, than the new ones coming into the church. Seniors should be able to handle more and be more patient with children, patient with each other. There is nothing sadder in the church when <clears throat> There is nothing sadder in the church when a senior is still hung up over something that happened 30 or 40 years ago. Amen. And you plan to go to heaven? Friends, years in the church, time with Jesus, without being filled with Jesus, means nothing. We can come to church year after year after year after year after year, but if we are not filled with Jesus, it will not change us. But praise the Lord, God is still waiting. It is, the, the disciples spent three and a half years and were changed very little. How many of us here have been in the church ten years? Now, not necessarily in this church, but in the church, in the seminary church. How about 15 years? 20? 25? 30? 35? 40? I'm still a young person. 50 years? Amen. Amen. Friends, for those who have been 40, 30, or 50 years, Ask yourself, am I still the same person today that when I first came into the church? If your answer is no, that I have grown, praise the Lord. If your answer is yes, I'm still the same person, God have mercy. <laughs> the church, God has not filled and penetrated your heart yet. In Acts chapter 3, praise the Lord that the disciples did get it. What is the reaction after they are filled with the Spirit of God? Acts chapter 3, verse 6. We remember this story where Peter and John come into the temple to pray. There is and they say, Peter and... I'm, I'm sorry. They say, silver and gold we have none. Acts chapter 3, verse 6. Silver and gold I do not have, but what I have, but for what I do have, I give to you. <clears throat> Let's pause there. What did Peter have? The Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit. 
Spirit have finally come into it inside. You cannot give what you don't have. Peter said, but what I do have, I give to you. In the name of Jesus of Nazareth, rise up and walk. He rose up and walked. Acts chapter 4, verse 8. Just the next chapter. Acts 4, verse 8. Here, through 10. Peter and John are arrested. Then Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, said to them, Rulers of the people of, and elders of Israel, if we this day are judged for a good deed done to a helpless man, by what means he has been well made, let it be known to you all and to all the people of Israel that by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you have crucified, whom God raised up from the dead, by him this man stands here before you whole. What has the Spirit inside of Peter done? It has made him bold for Jesus. And he preached this powerful sermon. And at the end of the sermon, 3,000 are baptized, are converted into the church. Acts chapter 5, they arrest the disciples. Acts chapter 5, verse 17. They're imprisoned, they're beaten. Notice their attitude. Acts 5, verse 17. Then the high priest rose up, and all those who were with him, which is the sect of the, San of the Sadducees, and they were filled with indignation, and laid their hands on the apostles, and put them in the common prison. But at night, an angel of the Lord opened the prison door, and brought them out, and said, Go! Stand in the temple and speak to the people all the words of this life. And when they and when they heard that, they entered the temple early in the morning and taught, and the high priest and those with him came and called the council together with all the elders of the children of Israel and sent to the and sent to the prison to have them brought. Here they are put in jail. An angel lets them out and tells them, go back down and do the same thing. And what do they do? Go back down and do the same thing. Go back down and do the same thing. These are different disciples than Acts chapter 1. These are different disciples. There is where, where you even read that the disciples met together in fear of the Jews. Here there is no fear. Here they are filled with the Spirit of God, raising people that can't walk, walking out with an angel that let them out, and going out and continuing in sharing the gospel. They get arrested, released by an angel, they get beaten, but they rejoice. These were not the same disciples from Acts 1. What made the difference? Acts chapter 2, they were filled with the Holy Spirit. Amen. They were finally filled with the Holy Spirit. They were not revengeful. They were not upset. Because now they were filled with Jesus. In Ephesians chapter 3, we turn to Ephesians chapter 3. Verses 14. Ephesians 3, 14. Here it says, For this reason I bow my knee to the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, from whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named, that he would grant you according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with might, through His Spirit in the inner man, inside, that Christ may what? Dwell in your heart through faith, that you being rooted and grounded in love, may be able to comprehend with all the saints what is the width and length and depth and height, to know and to love, to know the love of Christ, which passes knowledge, that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. That you may be filled with all the fullness of God. Amen. He has to come in. 
Now, young people, if you understand this now, if you get this now, you will live a happier Christian life. A happier Christian life. Don't spend your trying your time. Now, hear me out. Don't 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 shut me out before I finish my sentence. Don't spend your time trying to overcome sin. Spend your time getting filled with Jesus. Amen. Spend your time getting filled with His Word, with the Holy Spirit. And if you try and try to overcome sin and try to overcome sin, you're going to find yourself falling in in it again and again and again. And you will frustrate yourself because it keeps popping back up. But unless there is no this infilling, it will never work. It will never work. But praise the Lord of God, He is still waiting. He is still waiting. Everything changed when the disciples were filled. And everything will change once you are filled. Everything will change once you are filled. You will see life through new eyes. Through new eyes. What made you upset will not make you upset. What got under your skin may not so much anymore. Your life will be different. When you are filled, you can walk through life as God has always intended and He called you from your wretched past. And until you are filled, you are not Christian enough. Until I am filled, I am not Christian enough. We need to be filled with the Holy Spirit. We have this, we, we have this list. I remember at least I used to. I used to have this list of things that I needed to overcome before Jesus came. I needed to stop lying. I need to quit listening to that. I need to quit going to that website. I need to quit talking back about this. I need to quit stealing. Whatever it was. And some of them may have your own list. And we're hoping that we finish it before Jesus comes. Friends, until you are filled, you are not Christian. We need to be filled with the Spirit of God. And He will begin to remove those items. By us surrendering our hearts to Him. 2 Corinthians 3.13 doesn't say, By obeying you become changed. By beholding you become changed. By beholding, watching, spending time with Jesus, you become changed. Don't worry about sin in your life. Seek the Lord daily. And the Spirit of God will remove the sin. Don't misunderstand me. Obedience is important. It is important. Don't, I don't want someone else, someone here saying, the pastor said we don't have to worry about no, no. Obedience is important. The Bible said that, that those who obey God will enter into the kingdom of heaven. But you cannot obey if He is not filled in your heart. If He is not inside of you. God has too many disobedient Seventh-day Adventist children. Too many. Too many Christians that are not filled with Him. That are not filled with Him. But praise the Lord, God is still waiting. God is still waiting. We need to stop playing games so the Holy Spirit can transform you. The Holy Spirit can change you. If you don't believe me, ask my wife. <laughs> I am not, you know, that, 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 that wasn't intended to be funny. But you can ask my wife. Their eyes would not even come up and talk to anyone in the public. Ten years ago, eleven years ago. I would not go out. I would Bible study. I would not. I would like to be alone. But by God's grace, He began to change, change, and change. Because hardly you can be by yourself all the time. And He began to change me, not just having me more 
social and talking, but even certain things that you don't need to know, but that my wife and I know, that he has removed this sin from my life, and that sin from my life. God can transform you. He can. If He cannot, then we're serving the wrong God. But I know, I'm a witness, that God does transform people. And we need to stop playing this game that because we come to church, because we hear sermons every Sabbath, we're going to shoot right into heaven. God isn't looking for attendance. He's looking for a converted heart. Amen. And a converted heart will come to church. A converted heart will do good. But we need to be filled with the Spirit of God. To change the way you respond, the way you react, the way you handle situations, I know that for sure. <laughs> you know, every spouse knows what they have. Do you know what I'm talking about? Every husband knows what type of wife he has. Every wife knows what type of husband she has. And the way that I have seen with my own eyes, and God transformed me. The way she responds is, well, what happened there? <laughs> God is working in every single heart that opens itself to Him. That opens herself to the Spirit of God. And if you are not being transformed by the Spirit of God, friends, you're just plain church. And you are not Christian enough. I want to ask, I want to ask that all those who are 49 and below to stand. All those that are 49 and below to stand. Okay, remain standing. Listen up, folks. If you learn this early in life, if you learn this early in life, what it means to be a Christian, you will be just fine. You will be just fine. You see, we sometimes worry and think, oh, I need to get my life in order. I need to, I need to have, you have your checklist of, I need to have worship. I need to return my tithe. I need to do many things.
Lord, you are looking for filled people. Thank you, Father, because you hear my prayers. And you hear the prayers of your saints. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen.